Now that we have our joints cleaned out and we have our back to rod in, I'm going to show you using our SB2005 machine how easy it is to do this uh, joint filling process. On this particular machine, I decided to bring out our optional battery inverter setup. Makes it very, very easy, very quiet, no cords involved. Our machine has 6.7 gallon tanks on each side. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, retaining bar off the top here. These are stainless steel tanks and at the bottom we put these nice stainless steel strainers to make sure that no foreign objects fall down and get clogged in the pump system. These machines can be run with the lids on or with the lids off. I prefer to run it without the lids on, that way I can always verify there's product in the machine as I'm pumping. Very simple to use this machine. I'm going to show you a single man operation and it's possible because all of the controls are right here on the handle, the on off and the speed control. I'm going to load in our standard PE85 material that we use on all of our warehouse jobs. The first product that I'm going to load is our B side, our joint filler. It has a tear tab here. I'm just going to pull off the lid. Now we sent out to this job site our product untinted. And that's a great way for us to uh, speed the product out to your job site. And you can add your tint pack on site when you need it. And for this particular job, we're simply going to use the color gray. And we're going to blend it into the polyol side. However, it's very important that we first start stirring up the polyol side before we add the tint to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to stir this up. And you'll see it kind of blending. Because this is the polyol, that means there's many different color, uh, excuse me, chemicals within the product. So it's very important to get this stirred up. I suggest you stir it up for two minutes with the paddle uh, drill before you add the pigment. Be careful not to induce air into the product. Now, as I'm stirring it, I'm going to start adding the pigment. You're going to see how easily the pigment blends into the material. The pigment being heavier, We'll settle to the bottom if we send out the, uh, the bucket pre-tinted. That means with the pigment already in it. As you can see as I'm blending this, this is immediately changing color. This is our standard gray. We can send out any color out to your job site. And we like to base a lot of our colors off of the Sherwin-Williams color chart. The fan deck, I should say because if we can see a color, we can match it. So we've matched up to this point at least 300 colors. And we can do that at no extra cost. And it's great, especially if you're going out on a job site and you might have three or four different colors, we can simply send our PE85 out to the job site untinted. You could have tint packs sent to the job site after you've made the selection of the color. And you can have extra tint packs of different colors ready to go because sometimes it's very, very difficult to anticipate and to order exactly the right amount of a certain color. So when you use our untinted system, you're able to eliminate that error of ordering a special color and having too much of it out on a job site. All right, I've mixed this for about a minute. I'm going to go ahead and take this, set this down. I've got a nice mat here so I'm not making a mess. I'm going to go over here to the machine. The polyol side is what I just stirred up. I'm going to pour this stirred up bucket into the polyol side of the tank, I mean side of the machine. Because this is a 6.7 gallon tank, it's very easy to pour an entire 5 gallon into that side. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this lid back on because I'm going to pour the clear ice ISO. Now this product does not have to be stirred. Therefore, there's no need to uh, take the lid off. We provide a nice, what we call a Ricky spout. 
And all I do is pop that off and now I can pour that in. I'm gonna take off this Phillips uh, a screw right here to let the air bleed a little bit faster. It's a good idea to save this because if you uh, need to not use all of this, it's a good idea to, to seal it back up. I'm simply going to pour the A into the uh, ISO side. Okay, I've got the A side all filled. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on for right now. I'm going to come back over here to our mat. And I'm going to just make sure that I don't allow any air to get down into the A side. I'm going to put the screw back on. The A side is uh, sensitive to air and moisture more than polyol side, so it's always a good idea to keep that sealed up. All right, now I've got product in both my A and B, my ISO and my polyol. I told you I like to run it without the lids on, so I'm going to take the lids off for this dem demonstration. I'm going to turn the inverter on by pushing the button in, and when I do that, the green light comes on, and that means now, now we have our, our energy coming from our 12 volt battery through the inverter, switching it to the 110, which is now the way this machine runs. I'm going to come over here to our purge bucket. On the end here, on the end of the manifold is where we put what we call a nightcap, this little white piece. We secure it on to the manifold with a chain and give you an extra retaining nut. I'm going to pop that off. We send it to you already uh, filled with grease. The first thing I'm going to do is start pumping the product through the hoses. I'm going to turn it on, then start increasing the speed. And that was the uh, grease. Now some of the oil that we had in the system. Now you start to see the A and the B side coming through. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to get my uh, mix mixing nozzle. And we're pretty much ready to go. All right. I'm going to install the mixing nozzle with the retaining nut. Once that's secured, first thing I want to do is turn this back to zero, turn the machine on, then start increasing the speed. And as you can see, the uh, product is flowing through the nozzle. I can speed it up very fast or I can slow it down to, to nothing. That's the great beauty of having all the, all the controls right where the operator is. I'm going to run this machine by myself, so I'm going to take the hose and I'm going to wind it around the machine and support it so that I can run it from the side. This is a great way to run the machine because you don't have to waste another person out on the job site. You can do all the work yourself. Another good thing about our PE products is we give you a 60 second open time. So I'm going to turn this back on. You see I had plenty of time to move around. So very simple. Just put your nozzle back down in the joint. Turn it on. I'm going to increase the speed a little bit. As I'm walking backwards, I'm overfilling slightly. All that extra product that's on the top is just waste. Now this floor is a little bit slanted because of all the damage. Let's take it through there. Then I'm going to walk to the other end of the joint. This is the area that we had repaired with our TX3 and sand. And I recut the joint. You always want to honor the joint in a floor. You don't want to repair over a joint and not recut it. Our polyurea bonds extremely well to our TX and our FX repair products. Okay, I've just come to the T. The amount of overfill is determined by the speed that you run the machine, the depth and width of the joint, and also how fast you walk. You want to make sure when you're running the machine not to trap yourself into a corner. Once you get a good rhythm going, you can fill about 5,000 lineal feet once it's prepped in a day easily. You can do this with one man. 
The other, the other people on the job site should be used to keep everything out of the way and keep things prepped for the guy that's filling. Okay, we've gone ahead and filled the joint that we want to show out on this job. We'll let it cure for about uh, 35, 40 minutes before we shave it.